clients. It's well below the TCP connection timeout, which is the big deal. Our clients will connect in via TCP. As long as we pause for less than the TCP timeout, the client will never know we actually moved that box. And that's the same as VMware and anything else. There's always a slight pause, but the important thing is it's below the TCP connection timeout, which we now have. So in R2, the, the real big thing here is we have a zero downtime high availability story. The other thing we now have as well in R2 is cluster shared volumes. So again, familiar with Windows, NTFS is very much a shared nothing file system. We can't have multiple nodes writing to an NTFS volume at the same time. The metadata gets corrupted. So in our Hyper-V environments, we would have to create multiple, basically, areas on a SAN, a LUN, one for every single virtual machine. So it was kind of a pain to manage. If we had 20 different virtual machines on a Hyper-V server, we'd have to create 20 different LUNs if we wanted to be able to move them between servers independently. Cluster shared volumes now enable us to have storage that is simultaneously accessible by all nodes in the cluster at the same time. So you pair that with live migration. We don't have to dismount or mount NTFS volumes between nodes in the cluster anymore. We don't have to have separate LUNs for our virtual machines. It's a very powerful, very flexible, high availability story. The next type of virtualization, so that's really machine server virtualization. Obviously, the next big one is presentation virtualization, so terminal services. We had a lot missing in server 2003. I mean, printing basically just did not work in 2003. What we now have in 2008 and in 2008 R2 is TS Easy Print, and it's basically a driverless printing solution. So the way it works is the user connects to the terminal server, and print something. What actually happens is an XPS document, which is the XML paper specification, so it's the Microsoft version of PDF effectively, it doesn't try and create a data packet for the user's local printer. Instead it just creates this generic XPS document. If the user wants to access the properties of the printer, TSEC print just tells the user's local machine, hey, show up the printer properties dialog locally they can make all their selections. When they then want to print that XPS document, it's just sent over the network to their local machine. Oops, sorry. Oops. It's sent over the, local, over the RDP connection, and that XPS is locally rendered using the user's local print driver, and then prints in the correct format. So we now effectively have a driverless printer solution for terminal services. This was a big issue with 2003. So again, companies using Citrix today, there's a big licensing saving potentially today if you can drop Citrix and use the terminal services in 2008 and R2. Continuing that story, terminal services gateway. So again, RDP traditionally operates over port 3389, which generally means, what, what do we care about that? To access remote services in our network from the internet, we generally have to VPN in first. So that means the computer has to have a VPN client, we need certain ports open, et cetera, et cetera. Terminal Services Gateway basically encapsulates all of the RDP packets in HTTPS. So HTTPS is just secure web traffic. Every company basically has this port open. We all need to access it to access Amazon and buy stuff. This means now with TS Gateway, I don't have to VPN into my company first before I can access resources. I can access TS, um, via TS Gateway resources from anywhere in the internet just by specifying the TS Gateway address as part of my connection details. So it's basically enabling me to have access to my resources from anywhere without requiring a complex VPN infrastructure in place. But it's still very stringent. I can control who can access it, which machines they can access, what resources they can redirect. So again, this is another big selling point for 2008 and 2008 R2 this VPN-less connection. Remote programs, again, another big feature that we had in Citrix that's now part of 2008, terminal services remote programs. So typically under 2003, when I had a remote session, I had a complete separate desktop, start bar, notification tray, 
lots. It was just completely separate. And it was hard for general users to really understand that environment. With Terminal Services Remote Programs, only the application that I want to run remotely is displayed on my local desktop. So instead of having a complete separate desktop, I just have my local normal desktop, with my start bar, etc. And then the application that's running on the terminal server just runs the application window. It's totally seamless for my local desktop environment. I don't get a second desktop. So it's completely seamless applications. I don't really know which applications are running locally and which are running on a terminal server. And there's a new web access component. So if I don't have shortcuts and I don't know which applications I want to access, I can just go to this TS web access portal. It lists the applications that are available and I can just launch them and it automatically just starts that application on my local desktop, but it's actually running on a terminal server. So it just gives me a very easy interface to run any application that's available through terminal services. There's improvements here with R2. So in Windows Server 2008, I see every single application that's published, whether I have access or not. With 2008 R2, I can now specify multiple servers and it actually only shows me the applications that I have access to. So it's a streamlined view. Instead of seeing everything and then maybe failing to launch certain applications, in R2, it will actually take a sum of all the applications available over multiple servers and then only show me the ones that I have actual permissions to view. So we introduced this feature in 2008 and really enhanced it with R2. And again, as I said, there's more enhancements in R2 around a lot of these. The really big one we get in R2 is enhancements to the RDP protocol, which is how we actually connect to the terminal servers, which are now called remote desktop services. I get full multimedia support, aero glass, remoting. I can have full multi-monitor, voice over IP integration, just lots of powerful features there. But the big one is I now support virtual desktop infrastructure. So obviously VDI is a, is a huge new thing. And in 2008, we didn't really have a complete solution. In 2008 R2, our gateway, which we actually use for users to initially connect to, fully supports virtual machine clients now. So we can actually do a full VDI solution using Microsoft technologies. So the 2008 R2 is fully VDI ready. Windows Server Core was a big addition to Windows Server 2008. And essentially what's happened is, I mean, Windows Server as a platform has got lots of new features, it's got very sophisticated, lots of capabilities, but sometimes there's too much. If I just have a basic box I want to run domain controller and DNS on, I don't want Windows Explorer, MMC, .NET, Media Player, Internet Explorer, all those features. It's more things I have to patch, it's more potential attack vectors, um, it's a bigger footprint. So Windows Server Core was introduced in 2008 as a very much scaled down version install of Windows Server. So it's not a separate license, it's just an install option when you install the box. So again, I go through my installation and I can pick whether or not to do a core or full installation. Microsoft did some checks and essentially if there had been a server core version of Windows Server 2000, it would have needed 60% fewer patches. So the idea here is that if we can actually use server core, and again, this is very useful in branch locations, use server core. It's less to patch, it's less to manage, it's got a smaller attack surface. And I can run most of the roles. I mean, I can run Active Directory, DHCP 